I've, I've definitely met people uh, who, are, who are advanced in, in their sort of practice. They've been doing it for years and they seem very clear to me. They sort of seem like someone who's had an awakening. So I don't really think in terms of whether they have or haven't. I don't worry about it. Um, I just work with what's happening in the moment, but they sort of feel like it to me. And then sometimes it'll come up and they'll go back and and say, you know, this thing did happen a while back and we talk about it. And I'm like, yeah, that's to me, that sounds like an awakening. <clears throat> um, and then they might be a little relieved or something, but still the conversation is really just about what's happening right now anyway. And it, it proceeds that way. It's a funny business to be in to talk about awakening as such. I mean, there are entire traditions in which it's taboo to even talk about it as such. I don't know a lot about Theravada and Buddhism, but I know people who are Theravada Buddhist and who have told me that in general in Theravada and Buddhism, the idea is that you, it's, a, it's more um, learn and practice and practice the Eightfold Noble Path and all that and gain merit. And sometime in the next few lifetimes, you may have enlightenment. That's kind of the way it's seen generally. I'm sure there are exceptions to that. Uh, Zen, at least I'll tell you my experience of Zen, um, uh, my teacher did talk about it and would emphasize it if you were working on a koan, for instance, like what is mu, um, and you had not had a shift, uh, like if you were in Doksan, he would work with you directly on it or something like that. Um, but it wasn't, certainly wasn't theoretical. And it wasn't um, narrative based, like, oh, here's what it was like for me. It's more like just using the koan to really break through something, to break through the identity barrier. And, uh, and he had a lot of um, tashos and lectures on what prevents that from happening, mind identification, even though he wouldn't use that terminology, but talking about the way our minds fixate and the way we um, it's fixated into the intellect and so forth. So I think a lot of his lectures were sort of around that kind of thing, as well as using various pieces of Buddhist doctrine as a springboard to, to, to give a lecture or give a talk, which ultimately was always pointing to it. He also tempered it a lot with pointing to compassion. Um, it's something I don't do, actually, uh, but he, he would talk about compassion a lot and how ultimately this plays out as... Uh, having a, a, an effect on how you proceed in the world and how you uh, interact with everyone and everything you come in contact with. The Zen uh, lineage that my teacher came from was actually a sort of mixture of Soto and Renzai. And in Japan, I, that's not too common. Um, and they're actually, in such Japanese style, they're, they're, they're quite different in certain ways, even though they're both Zen. Um, but in the practice approach in the Soto's tradition, it's, it's more like it's do based on like what Dogen said, basically. But, you know, sit and um, you already are Buddha nature. Uh, sit and actualize it in one way of speaking. Uh, but talking about uh, Kensho as such was probably pretty uncommon in that um, lineage. If we could ask our friends here. Um, but uh, the other side, Renzai, tended to be. Uh, especially early on with koans and so forth, tended to be very direct about waking up, talking about it as an event, talking about it as an event that can happen in this session and breaking a stick over the altar, you know, telling you to push yourself and that you're holding the most precious thing in the universe in your hand, don't waste your time, uh, uh, bring me moo, you know. So, so even in the Zen lineage, which... Um, uh, evolved in China and then Japan, um, there's significant divergence in the way it's treated, uh, it can show. In other um, areas of Buddhism and, and a lot of Hinduism and so forth, it's not considered something, it's almost like it's not, I don't know, known about. Like they, they would talk about enlightenment as some full, full enlightenment, you know, liberation. Um, uh, breaking the 10th fetter or whatever. Uh, but somehow, like, either overlooking or just not talking about the fact that these significant and very life-altering shifts in identity do occur for sure. Um, so, yeah, it's, there's it's such a mixed bag as far as how people do or don't talk about this.